Okay, uh, let's go back to the phones. Um, Sharon is calling us from Texas. Uh, something about a mother-daughter relationship. Sharon, welcome to the program. Hello. Hello. You know, I first looked up. Sharon, calling from Texas. Mother-daughter relationship. And I was just talking about my mom. My sister, Sharon, lives in Texas. I go, Sharon, you call and talk about mom? <laughs> I, I guess you could. You know, we, we could do that. But you're not my sister. So, well, you kind of probably are, you know, in the faith. Maybe you're in community of humans. But <laughs> tell me your question. How can I help you? Okay. I want to try to do my best to not be a typical caller and go off into too many details. Um, basically, <laughs> I've, I've lost my relationship with my best friend, my 23-year-old daughter. Ooh. And I'm, I'm fine with her having her own wife and her husband and her little baby that's one-year-old. I don't want to control anything in her life. I just want to be a part of it. But yeah. I'm not blaming the, the new husband or his family. They are wonderful. They are wonderful people I know firsthand. But I don't understand why she's letting them be a part of my grandbaby and her's life every day, even though they live 30 feet from her. Um, Did you say 30 feet? I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> they They were so kind and co-signed for my daughter and, and their son to get uh, a modular home and be able to set it right there by theirs. They were gifted part of the land. Um, and it was, it was wonderful because they're paying the same in a house payment that they were for a little bitty tiny apartment. And cool. I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful that she's got a mother-in-law that loves her and takes interest in her just like her stepmom did. I was so grateful for that because I know it can be different. Um, and so oh, her stepmom. That, so I, she's you've you've had to kind of share her with another mother before. Yeah. Oh, okay. But my but mom. You sound you sound so gracious. You sound so gracious in this. Um, you're not making them bad. You're appreciating it. You're seeing the value. So where does the problem come in? What is she? What what did she? She cut you out? Is that what happened? Well, she thinks I cut her out is the problem. And it I guess it was your fault technically because I I put up a boundary to protect myself from reacting to her behavior that she couldn't hear me telling her was hurting me. <laughs> <laughs> I do <know. laughs> Okay. I, um, I don't know how you did it, though. I, I'd have to hear the tape to make sure you did it like I told you to. So she was, she, what was she doing that you, you put up a boundary about? She was so ready to be grown and mature and responsible and everything else. And she was all those things. But she wanted me to treat her like an adult and not a child and not, you know, give her my opinion on things or how to fix this or that. And I was trying to respect that, but she would lose her patience when I had no idea that she was even getting upset and all of a sudden there would be an outburst and her scream at me and walk out the room slam the door how and old 22 at the time she was almost full-term pregnant so i ignored it and i i just excused it but i excused it even sometimes before she was pregnant and her husband okay. started experiencing some of that too and talked to me about it. I talked with her, brought it to her attention in a loving way. He told me a couple of days later, oh my God, she's like a different person. I don't know what you said, but thank you. And I just wish he could do the same for me because he's just wanting to back her and support his wife and be a good husband. And she's not comfortable. Wait, wait, hold on a second. You, you said something to her and she got better and he thanked you for that. Is that what happened? Yeah. And that was right before they got married. They've been married now a little over a year. Okay. So then what did she do? What was the boundary that you set that caused the rift? Well, after she had the baby, I was actually, this was a year ago, last month, I had 
gotten to a point, I've, and I'll sum this up quick. Yeah, we got to go fast. I was going through a lot of changes with me. Yeah. I left my husband for about four months. We totally had a turnaround. God saved our marriage. Should have been oh, divorced four times in the court. Did not happen. We went to re-engage. He quit drinking the alcohol that was changing him into someone that I hated that reminded me of my upbringing. Okay. So um, get, I, I'm needing I another riff here. We're, we're going to run out of time. So what, what, I'm what, sorry. what, why? I set a boundary on her and told her that it was hurting me that she wouldn't give me a time or a day or something in the future to know when we could come by and see Olivia. We wanted to respect her boundaries of not just dropping in because that's, that's not a boundary. Family that's not a boundary. That's just a request. You're just asking well, her when, when, when can I come? Okay. Exactly. And I could never get her to give me a, a day or a time. It was always put off, put off, put off. And I dealt with that and those answers for about two months. And then it just started to get to the point, okay, she's blowing me off. And I feel like she's leaving me like she did when she moved with her dad when she was 12. Yeah. And I'm panicking because I'm seeing pictures okay. of her in-laws so, with so my what, granddaughter, but I'm I, I'm sorry, I got to interrupt you. I, I need a I, because I'm just concerned for time. What, what was the boundary? What I had to cut her off on Facebook. And I told her it's hurting me to see these pictures come up all the time. And they set me off because I'm a bald in the middle of Walmart, not being able to uh, be yeah, with that's the awful. grandbaby like the mother-in-law. Okay, so and was so that the boundary you think? Was that the boundary? You. I set Go that ahead. boundary. She still continued to not understand, and I ended up having to unfollow them on Facebook, which okay. I didn't know if it sent a notification, but regardless, it set her off. She thinks I left them. And okay. it was just because I wanted her to understand that importance, and I just missed her. I missed her. Okay. All right. I get it. I think it's awful. Um, you said something key in there that I was already thinking before then. You said it kind of reminds you of how she happened. You know, this started when she was 12, right? And maybe before mm -hmm. then. But, I, Sharon, I think my hunch is what's going on here is um, – it's kind of not about just the now. I mean, this is a, it sounds like a classic kind of reworking of something that was unresolved, you know, the first time. And 12 is a key, 12, 12, okay, two and 12 or 13 and 18 to 22 are all the same issue, each one of those. At two years old, the toddler leaves home, establishes their own life. Home was here, you know, cuddling with mommy all the time. And then what happens is, I don't know if she was a difficult toddler or not, but then what happens is at 12, you see the same thing again. They leave home and home becomes peers, right? Hopefully. Mm -hmm. And then... And then at 18 or 20, 18 to 22, then they really unplug and leave home. And so what happened in hers was, and this is where I do have, have empathy for her. She had, she had, uh, you know, steps in here because th there was a divorce, she mm -hmm. had a stepmother. So it's hard to differentiate between two, two parents. It's sort of like complicated bereavement that I talked about a moment ago. And then you said stuff yes. happened then and stuff and she's probably had a little difficulty in, in teenage years. You know, you guys might have buttered heads or at least at the end. So I, I say all that to just say this to you that um, I hope, I hope some of it can, you know, sometimes you put it in the bigger picture can ease a little bit of the pain of giving you some understanding of you're not just getting rejected here. She's working out some kind of, split in her head there's the good family and now the bad one right remember i talked about that if you go back and listen i don't know if yeah. you're in the first part of the show and so she's having a hard time integrating that what i would do at this point though is um just given you know what you've said i would just communicate with her you know in letter or however you do this just you know reaffirm your love 
and and just say, um, I don't fully understand how we got here. I'm sure there's things that you are feeling that I don't even know about that might have been hard to even express to me or maybe that I didn't respond to in the best way or whatever. Um, but I'm grateful for what you have with your in-laws, you know, and all of that. The bottom line is I just miss you. And I would like to resolve that. I understand you've made it clear that um, you don't want to uh, necessarily just automatically get together because there's probably some stuff that, that, that you need to talk about first. So I'm just um, inviting you to take that step with me and maybe we go see a counselor. Maybe it's too hard to do it with just the two of us. But what I want you to know is I do love you and I'm happy for your in-laws and you and all of that. I just miss you. And I wouldn't put any demands around it. I would just say, I just miss you. I'd like to, I'd like to get in a, in a good, safe setting, maybe with some help and try to understand the way forward. And that's what I would do. And, and maybe something else in there, as I recall what you said was, um, and I'm sorry that you were hurt when I did the unfriending thing. It was not an act of anger or aggression at you. It's just that it's just that I miss you so much. It's really hard to see you and see everybody. And it just makes me miss you more. See, all of that that I've just expressed, all of that is really vulnerable and nothing to really fight against. And so that's that's kind of how I'd put it. Okay. Sharon, I'm, I wish we had more time. I've got to go talk to some other people. Um, but I hope that's it's okay. I appreciate too. you so much. And, and, and what I would do is I'd go back and replay what I just said, you know, it'll be on Facebook. Um, not that you have to say it that way, but I, I put some elements in there when I, when I gave that example that are, I think important, it's the vulnerability. It's just the wish I miss you. It's the gratitude for what she has now. It's the, uh, the empathy for how it felt to her to be unfriended and all of that. And it's not the context, I don't think, to to start to, you know, talk about her, how she's hurt you in that letter. This is just an invitation to right. get into the process. That's how I would do it. Okay. Thank you for your call.